What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Pookie Bear. That's what your mom calls you. That is what my mom calls me. Because we're speaking the language of bromance, and today is a day that has been long overdue, or so my mother likes to tell me. Yep. Every time I see my mom, she's like, Pookie Bear, what are you going to have me on that podcast? Yeah. And then, and then you have I'm to like, explain. and then she's wait. like, what is a podcast anyway? <laughs> She listens every now and then, so she's got mine does not. In fact, funny story, when I was gonna talk, when I was gonna talk to her, I was like, Hey mom, let's get together. I was like, I just want to get together and we'll talk for like a little bit. And she's like, I don't need to like put on makeup or anything, right? <laughs> I was like, No, mom, it's audio only. It's you're fine. It's fine. But she did anyway. She did anyway. Yeah. And she well. was gorgeous. <laughs> well, yeah, this has been long overdue. Uh and we've got a wide variety of, of mothers in this that we want to talk to. So uh, the first one we'll queue up, uh, it really wasn't Mother Day focused, and I kind of take bits and pieces out of this, but uh, I am a, really close with my my in-laws. A lot of people aren't, and you know, it's, but it's definitely not the stigma that I have. My mother-in-law and father-in-law, I get along super well with. And my mother-in-law is wanting to get into recording audio with my father-in-law for our son, my, my son, Jacoby. Oh, nice. Just to kind of have that stuff. And she's she's always wanted to go out and like interview like older farmers from the area and stuff like that. Just really capture that old history. Yeah, yeah. So we got to sit for about an hour. Like I said, I'll dice this up uh, just to kind of get some different bits from it. But uh, the first one I wanted to share is my conversation with my mother-in-law, uh, which I had a lot of fun with. So I can remember when um, Tiffany was born. One of the first things he said to me was, um, your tires aren't good enough to drive my Mm. daughter around. (laughs) And I do recall when your son was born, he was checking Uh, your tires out as well. Yeah, he was pretty uh, picky about Tiff's car at that point. Yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, you got to have safety first. So, okay, so you guys get married, got a house. Uh, Randy and you guys were big into bowling. Randy oh, yeah, was, yeah. Um, what was he doing, four nights a week, five nights a week? Oh, initially, probably. Uh, we were, he was bowling two nights a week, and um, then he got up to four nights a week. He was a very good bowler, mm-hmm. you know, bowled several 300s, which I'm sure he can tell you in more detail about those. But he came from a family of bowlers, mm-hmm. and they're all in the Bowling Hall of Fame and all of that thing. And he really was a good enough bowler. He had thought about going out on the pro tour, Until our daughter was Mm. born, and then he decided, you know, that was just too much wasted money. He had to save money for Mm. her education, so so he he kind of stopped then. But he was a very good bowler, and we did that as a family um, for all of our extracurriculars for many years. Yeah, I love seeing his face light up when he talks about that because I've heard heard his three hundred games and his five hundred series and stuff like that multiple times. But it's one of those that you know, if there's not much conversation going on, I love to kind of start trying to get to that because yeah. I love just hearing <clears throat> the story all the He time. does light up. He was he averaged over 200 for several years, so I mean, he was a very good bowler. Well, and before Tiffany got here, he was, was he like a couple weeks away from going pro, a couple months away? We or? were both, you know, before Tiffany was born, um, and we thought we could not have children um, conventionally. Um we were both getting ready to make some major life changes mm-hmm. because we thought we don't need a house with a yard. Um, Randy wanted to go be on the pro tour. Um, we didn't want to, you know, just pull with anything. We were getting ready to sell the house, buy a condo, um, and size down enough that he could just travel mm-hmm. and we wouldn't have to worry about any of the other maintenance. And then Tiffany came along and she's adopted. Um, and she came along in, in just the most miraculous way. And so when she came along, it just put a stop to all of yeah. those things. And, and for the better, I mean, our life without her, um, I just, I can't even imagine it. She has been the greatest joy of our lives. And just every minute, every age, people say, I love babies. I love teenagers. Well, there was never a day that I didn't love mm. that day with my daughter. And, and Randy, too. And you can tell that because even now he puts her before just about oh, anything. I, I'm trying to figure if, if her or Jacoby, which one, his grandson, which one kind of wins. It, it, it's, it's a tight it's, race, it's, I think. It, it is a little bit of a horse race on that <laughs> one, yeah, because they definitely do. And I know, as I've told you in the past, that when anything comes up with them, whether Tiffany and Randy are fussing with each other or whatnot, we just all stand back. 
because it's just it's just about them, and and that's good. It's the, it's the best place in the world to be to watch them. Uh, I try to remember what it was. It's when I first started coming around, and um, you know, I've always had a great relationship with you and Randy, which has made like it's. There's always the saying like you don't marry a person, you marry the family, mm-hmm. and I feel completely that way with us. And I don't remember when it was, but we were working on one of the rentals, and we're putting um, that uh, allure down on the floor in the basement. And I think you gave me a heads up, or there was a conversation about how when those two work together, there's going to be bickering and arguing. And so, you know, we get down there, and we're working on it, and all of a sudden there's, like, some bickering and arguing, and I'm like, well, should I say something? I think I kind of looked at you just kind of backing away, and I was like, no, I'll just stay over here. <laughs> <You're sitting laughs> here. Let, them do, let them handle that. They're, they're good at it. But it's their relationship, and they just, they, they, it's one of those things where I, I think about the, there's something out of Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm where um, it talks about Rebecca is in a stream, and she's, looking at the rocks, and I'm probably saying this out of order because I never really read it, but it talks about how as the water's rushing, rushing over and all the rocks are, are snapping against each other that they go from the sharp edges to the rounded, beautiful oh. edges. And I always think of that when, when Tiffany and, <laughs> and um, Randy have that relationship because in the end they're just both two smooth, smooth, oh, beautiful yeah. stones. Mm. They just are wonderful together. Yeah, I know this past summer uh, they both got together to stain the deck and it was one of those. I'm, I'm just glad I wasn't around for much of it because. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's they can fight for like 20 minutes, but afterwards it's fine. Yes, they they both have to be right, and he taught her well, <laughs> and so she's entitled to her opinion now too. Yeah, it's pretty wonderful to watch them. So uh, and so I know. Oh, I think a great story to share too. Um, so when Tiffany was little, I think this kind of shows um, probably the stubbornness she's gotten from Randy. So when she was little. There was a baby goose oh, outside your guys' house. Yes. And was it you or Randy that said, if you catch it, you can keep it? Oh, that was Randy. Because okay. mother, I was not going to allow a baby <laughs> goose. So <laughs> go ahead and share that story. I think that's a really um, huge injury time. It, it is summer. one of my favorite, favorite summers. People always have these magical summers, and that was our magical summer. But... Um, there were we live on a small acreage and there's an area in our backyard where every year um, a pair of geese will always come and lay eggs and so then we get that whole spring of watching mm. the baby geese get raised up and um, one summer and Tiffany was probably maybe 10 I'm thinking um, one of the baby geese got left behind did not follow mommy and daddy off to wherever they go to and so it had been wandering around our yard um, and Tiffany saw it, and she wanted to catch it. We were sitting um, at our kitchen table looking out the window, and, she, and anytime she'd open a door, it would run off, mm-hmm. and she wouldn't be able to get to it. So I had said to her, you know, if you go out the front door, maybe you can sneak up on it. So she goes out the front door, and I don't yeah. see her, and I don't <laughs> see her, and I don't see her, and I'm thinking there's something wrong, and I go to check, and she has laid on her stomach, and she's crying crawling across the grass on her stomach like a I don't know like something out of a little military exercise and every once in a while she'll raise up to see where the goose is and then she'll put her head back down and she finally gets so close to this goose she pops up and has to chase it a little bit and she catches it and this thing's probably not standing I think more than seven or eight inches tall so it's very it's a very young baby goose a Canadian goose at that and so she brings it to the house and It's pooping all over the place. And I'm saying to her, now, honey, this is a wild thing, and we have to let it go. And so I say this many times throughout the day. And she, um, her dad gets home, and he really doesn't say a whole lot. He looks at her, and he looks at the goose, and he goes back to town, and he buys the materials (laughs) to build a little pen for the goose, and he buys uh, some kind of... um, poultry feed for the goose and together that summer they raised that goose to a full yeah, size got, goose yeah. it was full size yeah it was mature goose and it followed her around it followed her around mm-hmm. everywhere she went when she would come out in the yard the goose followed her and stayed with her she could pick it up even as an adult goose she could pick mm-hmm. it up and carry it if she laid down on the grass it would lay down and it would lay its head across <laughs> her um, it was it was just a really magical mm-hmm. time. So yeah, and her dad um, just gave her the best summer ever mm-hmm. when he 
helped her with that baby goose. That's funny. It's, I, I, of course, wasn't there, obviously, but I could easily see Randy walking in, seeing that, and just turning right around, and I didn't say anything. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Pretty much, it, that's the way it went. Um, that was the year, the first year that Columbia had the um, balloon festival, and the goose, because it didn't have a mom and dad to teach it, um, really never flew very high. And when the balloon started coming over, um, it finally got its wings. We were watching it one um, afternoon, and it finally got its wings, and it flew up to meet um, a balloon. Mm. And it flew off afterwards and uh, to, to our knowledge we never saw him again mm. but he was Jesse the Goose and Jesse's mom and daddy Tiffany had named them Jellybean and George <laughs> so Jellybean and George had Jesse the Goose and uh, best summer best summer of a child's life right there all right now that was good and I'm not taking away from it because it was it was sweet and it was endearing it's yeah, nice she- to, it's nice to see that you have like a a a good relationship with your in-laws. Yeah, and we went to a coffee shop when we recorded that, and she was dressed up. I look like a slob. so The coffee probably... shop was your idea, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Um, so now, we're all, everybody needs to sit back because we're going to spend a little bit of time with my mother. Now, I mean, you were asking if, if this was Mother's Day focused, and... Y- I, I was yes, it was, but also the um, I got together with I have I have three sisters, and so I got together with them, and we collaborated into into uh, a list of questions awesome. that they also wanted to know. So, mom, who's your favorite? Yeah, and why is it? Well, Richard? I mean, question one, of course, <laughs> actually didn't need to be asked because somebody has a podcast that they put their mother on. <laughs> And other people don't. So, who's the favorite now? Mm-hmm. I'll edit that part out where she said your sister's name. And then, and so here it is. Here's a clip. Here's 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 bits and pieces, snippets, snapshots, if you will, of an interview with a mother and her favorite son. I was just impressed. I got Zoom good. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Grandma was impressed. She got Zoom, too. Um, okay. Here we go. Now, I will, I will say before, well, I guess, I guess we can, you know, I guess whether or not we officially started, I don't know. But I will say that prior to this, I did message all three of my sisters to see if they had anything they wanted to ask you and oh, no. <laughs> they were little to no help. All, all of them. They were all little really? to no help. No, actually that's a lie. One, one of them had a, had a very, had a very interesting question, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So okay. this, this of course is in celebration of mother's day. So, even though, even though we're, even though this is, of course, happening a little bit before, Happy Mother's Day! Ah, oh, there you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and let it be known that I, the one that said it first, even though it was weeks early. Um, okay. <laughs> so, I'll start this off with what. <laughs> What do you see your what do you see your role as when it comes to being like a mother? Like what what do you like what I guess wow. I mean it's a very big question but like what does it uh, you know what is, what is, what do you feel like it means to you? <laughs> Best job I ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And it never ends. I've learned I I am learning that. I mean obviously not as a mother, but I am no. learning that, but it and it it changes and and sometimes it's it's hard that your that your task or your role changes. You're not always ready to give up some of it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, um, it's hard to let go. But you did like like you got you got four very grown children. Yes. 
So and like, I sit back and I go, wow. Okay, wow. so I, I guess, you know, yes, you're saying that, like, the job never ends, but do you feel, do you feel like you're on the other side of it? Like, do you feel like the hardest part's over? No, because it, it, there are different, there are hard parts with any of it. Hard parts as your children are grown is that you, that if you see them hurting, you can't fix it. Right, right. Yeah. You know, okay. it was easy. It was easy to fix the skin knee or the bump on the head. Those things were easy to fix. But as as an adult, no, it's it's not easy to fix things. Yeah. You can't just and, butterf- and, and, you can't just be like, oh, you busted your chin open. Let me just butterfly stitch you real quick. Yeah, like there some, you go. Like you're some kind of field medic in the Crimean War. Yes, it works. Not that I'm naming <laughs> incidents or anything. Yes, I, I, I learned how to butterfly quite quite a few wounds oh, together. Okay. Yeah, apparently so. Okay. So, so, yeah. I mean, as an adult, it's harder to, to help your kids out sometimes. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, yeah. So you say being a mother was the best job you ever had. But the que- oh, yeah. but but the question I have is like I don't I like is, is that is that what you envisioned for yourself when you were uh, younger? Were you like, "Oh, I I'm going to oh, I'm yeah. going to grow up and be a mom." Yeah. Oh yeah. But then, was, okay, but that but was that was that was that all of it or was that just part of it? Like, "Oh, I'm going to be I'm going to do this other stuff, but I'm also going to be a mom." I guess yeah. I guess I, the roundabout way is like you know, did did young you like was that like was that enough for you when you were younger? Like, oh, I'm going to be a mom, or did you want to be an astronaut? Or and I'm not um, saying that being a mom isn't enough. It it a hundred percent is. I guess I'm just asking. Did you would, were you wanting something on top of it? I always I always thought I I was going to have a career, and I always yeah. Now, what I do for what I do for my career is not what I what I thought I was going to be. I was going to be a teacher when I grew up, and I yeah? guess yeah, I can totally see that. I wanted to be a teacher. I I you wanted, wanted to be a, a math teacher. teacher, didn't you? Yes, I did. I knew I it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. So, but I so I yeah I wanted I but I was always going to be a mom. So the other stuff was just kind of a a, a sideline. But yeah. I was always a mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because it's a great example of what a mom was gonna was. So yeah, I wanted to be a mom. Well, I knew you went to college for for a bit. Is that what you were going? Was, was that the plan? Were you going to college to to be a teacher? Uh huh. Yep. Hundred percent. Like I knew you went to college, but I had no. I guess I never actually asked I wonder what she was going to college for yep I'm going to be a teacher huh as a math teacher god you'd so be a math teacher (laughs) and none of my children like math (laughs) except maybe Kelly (laughs) I mean I'm not against it I actually I actually my like like currently what I do now is very Math centric, yes. yes. but I mean, it's not calculus, but it's not you know algebra either. Uh, but you are always good with writing, and I could never, never hated writing. I could you, never. Ugh. Would you still want to be a teacher? Yes. Right now, yeah. like if somebody was like, "Hey." You know, I, oh, yeah. I got this open. I, there's this open spot. Like you can be a yeah. math teacher. Yeah. Well, you have a degree. <laughs> I you know. Be a you could ser- no. I'm serious. Like you could be a substitute teacher. When I was in school, like anybody, if, if like if they were as long as they had a bachelor's degree, then they could they could substitute teach. You have a bachelor's degree in ditch digging and be a substitute teacher. You can do that right <laughs> now. I, I mean, not right now, do. but <laughs> I, I kind of 
still do teaching. I mean, not with not with kids. I still do, you know, do conferences and lectures and stuff like that with seniors. So seniors are your children. <laughs> yeah, so seniors are okay. my children. Okay. <laughs> They're my class, my students. I'll teach you. Okay. 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 That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um so like what about like did you want to like I know you do it now you I mean you do it occasionally but like did you want to was you, was I guess the thing that's been a mystery to me and and yeah you know, and to some degree like my siblings has been like you know like maybe she wanted to do something else. Maybe she didn't want to be. Maybe she didn't want to be a mom. And we're not saying like you know, God, she probably wanted to do something else because because <laughs> that mom gig was pretty hard. She was just ugh. Oh, it was all it was yeah. all Judas Priest and God bless <laughs> and middle and screaming out first and middle name, so you really knew you were in trouble. Um, oh, but look what it did for you. I, I think, think I think, you adult I think all, that you are. Well, I'm saying like all four of us are probably like she 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 totally wanted to do something else. Like this this was <laughs> this was not first on her list. We know that for sure. No, no actually it was. Uh now I will say when I was little, I always played house. I always had I always had dolls. And believe it or not, I always had four kids. You always I had didn't when you so I wait always, a minute. So when you were playing with dolls when you were little, you had four dolls. I had four dolls. Yeah. Oh my god, one was boy. there one boy doll and three girl dolls? Because that would just be weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was. It. Oh, <laughs> see, we were all planned. You hear that? You hear that, guys? <laughs> all four of us were planned. <laughs> it was by design. Uh huh. So yeah, I always, always wanted to. Yeah, I was always going to be a mom. Please. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, now I. It wasn't quite the same when I really got into the gig as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It was. A, different than <laughs> than I thought it was was well, gonna like, be. Okay, so so you had one so for so for five years you just had one kid. Uh-huh. And that was okay, yeah. and that was me. How how was like how was one kid? Like dude you know I, I guess I guess as as ta- as you know it's like funny. Uh, other moms listening to this, you know, they're like, you know, one kid, two kids. Like I have three and it seemed like going from one to two. Not nothing. No big was deal. It, yeah. Going from two to three. Uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, it seemed OK. No longer, yeah. But and number four was eh, no big deal. I mean, it was. Yeah. Yeah. One. The first kid was was a game changer. Your life changes. Right. Second one, not not so much. And and really, even the third and fourth, eh, just one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So so yeah, I always akin it to being like a, uh, like like you're playing basketball. So you got. You got you know one kid. And you double, you're double teaming the one kid, you know, <laughs> and then with two kids, you know, because because I have I have Amanda, so then it's like man coverage. It's like all right, you take that kid, I'll take it, this kid. But like with three kids, that's when you start learning to play like zone defense. Like okay, you take <laughs> this area, and I'll take this area, and then. Yeah, you did kind of have to divvy up the divvy up the chores and divvy up the kids. Yeah. 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 Um I usually got the babies and your dad usually got the older kids. Like you did a lot I, more with your That's what, that's how I do it. I do the same thing. <laughs> 
That's how that's how I always did it. I always I always went for the older ones because I always felt like it was easier. But you know what? Yeah. It's not it's not Your easier. It's is. just different. It's just it's instead of like you know having to like haul them places, then it's just like it's thinky pain. Is what you know is. Yeah. Yeah. Like he didn't have to. If he took the older kid, he didn't have to change diapers and feed you. Yeah. So yeah. And you could walk and talk, and, and, and that was good. So then your sisters were all really close together. So it was just like one big kid. Well, exactly. That's that's the other thing. I, like, you know, so you, you, for five years you had one kid, and then when you got to two kids, you had a you had a you had a five year old, which you know, kind of could handle some things on their own. Like you didn't have to worry yeah. about them like shoving pennies in their mouth, but you know, yeah. so, so yeah. you, you know, it was like, Hey, there's, you know, there's pizza rolls in the freezer. You can put those in the microwave. Like you, you know, you, you have one that's, uh, that's semi functional that you don't have to worry I, about. A ho- I know, but I got to tell you this story. I'll never forget this. You were in kindergarten. Oh, here we Wait. go. When Kelly was born and you had to walk to school and I walked you to school and then I would go on, on to work. And then I would pick you up after, after kindergarten and, and take you either to a setter or, or we would come home. Right. So when I brought your sister home from the hospital that first morning, it got time for you to go to school. And I thought, Oh my God, I I can't take you to school. So I watched you walk down the alley yeah. and, then, and then go to the crossing guard. So you came home that day from school. You came home and I was busy with your sister and everything. And of course you were hungry. So you you went over to the counter, pushed your chair up, stood on top of the cabinet, got your peanut butter out and made your own peanut butter sandwich. I was yeah. horrified. I thought I had failed motherhood. I couldn't even have your lunch ready. For you as you walk <laughs> and walk home, and I I sat there and cried because I thought I had failed. That you. is a so glass half empty. Look at it, like like <laughs> like you got you got one that knows like he knows how to make his own food. He's fine. <laughs> but, there you go. He can make a peanut butter sandwich. I don't have to worry about him. He's on <laughs> autopilot from here on out. I've but done my job. I, he knows how to walk to school and make his own sandwich. I one kid down, I one to like, go. I, I felt terrible that, oh my <laughs> God, he's only five and look what he has to do for himself. <laughs> it, was it was fine. Terrible. It was fine. <laughs> okay. Well, that was, yeah. Okay. So, so, so you have one kid at five. Then we move on to kid number two, which was, which was a, which was a, a hurdle from the offset because kid number two was the size of a rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Like a small rabbit. Yeah. Two pounds and 12 ounces of her. Yeah. Yeah. I um I got a real education in how to take care of a preemie baby. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh oxygen, heart monitor. See, that's what I was gonna say, like, oh, you can't be like, oh, let's go for a walk, it's a nice day, because then you gotta push a stroller and then haul a thirty pound oxygen tank on a dolly. Yeah. <laughs> we were quarantined before it was popular. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, we didn't go anywhere. Yeah, Kelly was on. Kelly was on oxygen for the like t- first like two months she was home. Oh no, she was on oxygen for at least six months after she was home. Wow! And then she, she was, uh, and that was after being born and being in a hospital for the first three, three months. And a half months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she came home with oxygen and a heart monitor. So when I brought baby number three home, man, she was a piece of cake. Right. He didn't right. come home. Yeah, she came home with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, we did it. <laughs> we got this one right. Yeah. 
And then you're telling the second one, like, make your own sandwich. <laughs> no, because she was only 18 months. <laughs> Wait, 18 months. You don't have to walk to school yet, but make your own sandwich. The other one did it. Why can't you? There you Meanwhile, go. Meanwhile, she's shoving pennies in her mouth. And you're like, oh. Okay. So, so you have... I, I guess I guess the thing is that, you know, is like, I feel like it's, it, it seems like it's all these different, different hurdles, different challenges. And I mean, that's, you know, obviously that's true. That's life. But, you know, it's, you know, OK, we have one kid and I have no idea how to do any of this. But we have one kid, and so we figure it out. And then you have two kids, and then it's like, okay, now I have to figure out how to have how to be a mom of two. Oh, and by the way, this one's walking around. This one, I have to constantly have hooked up the hoses for six, for you know the better part of a year, while you know, and oh, and you also have to you know figure out how to be a mom of two okay now we get to three and then it's like oh i have to be a mom of now i have to figure out how to be a mom of three. Oh, and uh two of them are only 18 months apart so yeah. was kelly so and then and then you get to four so you have so, so yeah you, and now you have <laughs> yeah you, half years you're Three and a half years. I had three kids in three and a half years. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's like always, you said, it's like one, I mean, I mean, you know, you say like, oh, it was like one big kid, but you're like, no, it wasn't because you're talking about, you know, two kids that aren't potty trained at the same time. One that no. barely I had is. Two yeah, yeah, I had, I, Kelly was potty train, but Jenny and Stephanie were in diapers. Kelly was a big help when I brought Stephanie home. And you were she some, wanted a you did some insane thing where you had them in cloth diapers. Yeah. Because uh-huh. you were wanting to save the planet or some nonsense. I don't know. <laughs> I would have been like, screw this. I got two kids. Like, like I understand, you know, that you people, that I understand that, you know, that there's a hole in the ozone layer, but like, <laughs> give me a break, guys. I got two kids. Like, I need pampers. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I didn't even think about it. I just, yeah, you just did it. Yeah. I mean, there were, yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, there were days you just got up and you just did it. Right. And there are days now that I would give almost anything to have just one of those days back. I mean, you all got... Well, yeah, but all now you, you get different days. Yeah, you do. You do. I mean, when I mean, like, if if we could... I mean, if we're going back, like, 20 years ago, or no, if we're going back 30 years ago... Like, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, you minus 30 years would be like, God, I can't wait till all these kids are grown. And then I, I don't have to deal lot. with this bullshit. I did say I'll never survive this too. Yeah. 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 I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. You say that. I heard it. I say, yeah, you're right. I say it too. Okay. So. So okay, so I I mean this kind of answers the the last question I had, but like, what would you you know like what would you know you with now thirty plus years of mothering experience, what would you say to new mom with one kid that had four dolls? <laughs> I would I mean, like you know what <laughs> two dolls is fine. <laughs> need four dolls like but just just two dolls two dolls is work or you know what one doll i mean why not one doll you don't need four dolls trust me you don't need four dolls <laughs> but i had four. Oh, um it sounds really cliche but it don't sweat the small stuff yeah you know like 
they don't always got to have clean faces. They don't always got to have the perfect outfit. They don't, they don't always got to have a perfect bedtime or a schedule. It, it just, whatever works. Yeah. And what worked for me doesn't always work for somebody else. But, you know, I, in the end, all the kids are going to remember is, you know, we somehow all survived. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what, and that's, you're right. You're hundred percent right. That's exactly what we do. We sit, the four of us sit around with each other and we're like, oh, we're fine. We made it. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. what the big deal was. I don't understand why she got so pissed all the time. It was fine. <laughs> Yeah, don't sweat the don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to wear the holy jeans for the picture, that's fine. You go right ahead and do it. I did. You unless did they sent me, unless they sent me home, which they did no. on the case, they did every so often. You know, you got really tired of taking a picture with your three sisters. Yeah. So you came downstairs with the holiest pair of jeans that you could find. And I said, fine. You go ahead and wear them because that part's not going to show. You're only going to take a picture of the top. So you're fine. We're going. <laughs> so, and we Damn, did. I hate the fact she was smarter than me. <laughs> I was like, what? we're going. <laughs> um, all right. Well, mom, thank you so much. Thank, thanks. What did you sister? What did your sister uh, say? It want? was, I, 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 I they had they had the question. It was peppered in there. Um, uh, one of them does want to know what the um, wants to know what happened with a meatloaf cassette. There was a meatloaf cassette that one of them wants to find. Oh gosh, I was because you had bad out of hell on cassette. Oh, and, I did, and yeah. I loved it. Yeah, and I blast that. Well, one of them's looking for it. And I won't, okay. I won't out them, but one of them's, one of them is looking for it. I'll have to see if I got it packed away someplace. But there you go. Yeah. There you oh, go. I'm it's on the way. Stuff. Okay. I'm right. looking. For, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, happy Mother's Day, Mom. And yeah. thanks. Thanks for taking the time. And... <laughs> Since we're doing this, this means I don't have to get you anything. That's because right. Because the gift of me is enough. <laughs> Always, Richard. My, Always. It's my forethought that that <laughs> is what is what makes is what makes everything wonderful. Your sisters are going to be so mad at you. Yeah, that's Aren't fine. You? I'm fine with that. <laughs> not, well, not the first time. Won't be the last. <laughs> obviously <laughs> oh richard that was awesome so how did it feel to sit and talk with your mom um it, it was it was it was fun uh the one thing that i it's something that i like i've never really asked but like i was when i asked her you know what did you want to be like did you want to be a mom when you were you know growing up like was that your plan or did you have like something, you know, cooler that you wanted to do? <laughs> uh, she actually said that she always wanted to be a teacher. And I thought, I don't know, like I could, I could 100% see it because she was a total math nerd. There's pictures of her in high school and she's like your quintessential. She is the quintessential like mathlete that you would see in the yearbook circa 19, 1979. Because oh, she's, summer of love. she's so young. Well, Richard, uh, my mom uh, and dad, they live kind of in BFE, so they don't have like any good internet access. So I had to do mine old school phone recording version. And not only did was I... Was it like a crank phone? It was. And we had to kick, somebody, <laughs> we had to kick somebody off the line. 
So I got an app. I used it with my wife to make sure it worked fine. It did. And I went and recorded with my mom. We talked for like 20-ish minutes. And then we got off the phone and I looked and I screwed it up, Richard. We had to do two phone calls. Oh, professional. Pro, which I did on purpose because I wanted more time with my mama. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting. He says, like, I, you know, my main question with, with my mom was kind of the same thing. Like, you know, what like, did you Who's your favorite be? kid? Yeah, yeah. And why is it me? Yeah. And she said, well, it's not. And I said, well... Oh, and that's when the phone, I messed up on the phone because I was so shocked. I thought something was wrong with her. Uh, I asked her kind of the same thing, like, you know, how, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And she always said she wanted to be a mother, a mom of two, which she was. Uh Um, So it was a lot of a fun conversation. The, uh, I don't, it'll probably come off a little bit in the second, but it wasn't in the first, but I kind of asked her about like watching me play baseball. Which yeah, she completely brought up on her own in the first call. I, I bet she have, did. <laughs> it's like, so how proud of you were you when your son <laughs> hit a walk off home run? But um, were you the one that took it out of when I put it in Wikipedia? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom, uh, you know, the only uh, I think interesting thing too from the conversation is, you know, my mom has had a lot of um, uh, like. She she dealt with death a lot when she was younger. Yeah. Uh, her brother died when he was 16 in a car accident. And, you know, she kind of talked a lot about that, which I thought's like, it's really, it's a little morbid to an extent, but I think it's kind of why I think you want to talk about those things. Like, and kind of what, you know, why I want to talk with her is just, you know, letting people say the things that they need to say. Yeah. Because I think, you know, you know, you know, you always questions like, well, did, you know, did so-and-so really love me and stuff like that? And so I think she really got to be able to express that, which I thought was really cool. So, but I will let her do that here. And so this is my mother. All right. We got to do it all over again. I messed up. Okay. <laughs> she got to say everything the exact same way you said it before. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> no, we can do it again. <laughs> uh, you did really well with it, but I messed up, I think. So. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if it's going to be the same answers. Um, that's that's the test. I'm going to play them both next to each other. Um, so uh, what is your earliest uh, memory of being a mom? When I found out I was pregnant with you. And I then felt like a mom. I felt like a mom the minute I, I felt I was pregnant. Yeah. And then so what you kind of mentioned uh, that it took you guys a little bit before you uh, were able to to get pregnant what was kind of like the moment you found out uh and you didn't answer this last time um how did you tell dad about it um it took us about a year and a half to two years to get pregnant and we finally just gave up and then it happened um i wasn't working at the time so and of course we didn't have a house phone yet so i drove back to quincy and called the doctor and that's how i found i got pregnant And then I went home, and when John came home, I told him. And I'm like, hey, babe, we got to go to your mom's. And he's like, why? I said, well, we need to tell her some news. And he goes, what's the news? And I go, I'm pregnant. And he goes, okay, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) So did you tell? So he went out and told Grandma. (laughs) You told uh, dad's, uh, mom and dad first? Yep. Yep. How uh, did that go? Because. Because Grandma Henniger always wanted to be a grandma because she mm. was the same way like me. She loved being a mom, and she loved, you know, all the nieces and nephews around her house. So she was excited. She she gave us both a big hug and told us she couldn't wait, and, and she was. She was a great grandma. I mean, oh, yeah. she was Oh, she awesome. was the best. And yeah, I know that was, was uh, kind of the place when you were working and stuff. We'd, we'd always go out there and then come home with you and everything. and um. So what was it like having, uh, because Michelle and I were both pretty close in age, like a year and seven or eight months apart. So you had, you know, right at a two-year-old almost, and then you had a newborn. So what was was that like having two kids at that age? It was easy. I I thought it was easy. I mean, you were a lot of help. I'd be changing Michelle, and you would throw the dirty diaper away or get me a clean one. Um, I thought it was easy. You guys were close to the same age, you know, close enough that, I, I really didn't have a problem. I, I and of course I was a stay at home mom, so it was it was really nice to be home with you both. And you know, I thought it was easy. Mm-hmm. Of course, you got to remember back then, you didn't have everything that you have to worry about nowadays. 
how do you keep us in it? Like today, like you've got a lot of TV shows and stuff like that that can kind of help out or, um, you know, I think when we were younger, we didn't really live in the country. So, I mean, we saw a yard to play in, but, um, it was a fenced in yard, I guess. So I guess you could put us out there and it was pretty flat. But yeah, we was... had a fenced in yard and you guys had a swing and a pool and I would just sit out there while you guys played. You guys were great at playing together. Um, in the house, we always, um, colored, you know, we had one room as the toy room and you guys pretty much kept the toys in there unless you come out and play in the living room and you always put your toys away. So it was it was really easy. You guys were great at playing together. I mean, you never really screamed and fought each other for toys and stuff. I mean, it was really easy. What was your, your favorite age for us? You know, like you think grade school, middle school, high school, college, now, you know, like what was kind of the, the time? When you're in grade school, when you're young, you needed me more than you did when you turned 16 and 18. So I think the best time was like five because you were still, you know, you're still a baby, but you were a young toddler. So I think those were my favorite years when you were little. Did it? I know this is kind of what I'm thinking with my son is it's, you know, it's one of those things you kind of turn around. Cause I mean, like today too, with, with my phone, like every, you know, every day it's like, Oh, here's the f- memories from, you know, this day. And, you know, I go back and see four years worth of pictures of him and you yep. just see how quickly he's changed. It's very much kind of at the forefront of my mind. Like, Oh my gosh, like he's grown up so quick. Was, I mean, fast. and when you don't really have that as, I mean, it's easy to, as a reminder, I mean, I don't think too many people take it for granted, but was there a point in time where you kind of like realize like, Oh my gosh, these kids are, are like big and, you know, like just kind of like where, where it kind of felt like it really caught up to you, like, Oh my gosh, these aren't babies anymore. These aren't, you know, kids anymore. Yeah. I, I think once you guys hit 13, 14, you guys were very independent. Then when you hit 16, you know, you could drive. We bought you your first car. I mean, you both got jobs to pay for gas and insurance and stuff, but, you know, you got to run around more. You got to go to, you know, days. You you worked. You went to school. You went to practices alone. So, that, you know, that was the year that, you know, I, I was just mom. You know, I was here when you needed me, but you were at that age where you didn't. And that's the sad, that's the sad year is when you realize that, hey, mom, I don't need to scream for mom for a ride to practice. Yeah, and you had me being when I turned sixteen first, so I could take Michelle too. So you kind of got the double whammy there. Yep, yep, yeah. You guys are right behind each other, you know. When you think of, because like uh, Michelle, she was in cheerleading, and I, I played baseball and band. Michelle was in band too. Uh, kind of in that grade school, high school range. What was like your favorite thing with cheerleading that you remember of, of Michelle? Um, the favorite thing is when I was her coach. I really enjoyed, you know, I got to spend more time with her while she was doing cheering and, and the games and practices. Um, you know, they just need a coach. I didn't know really what I was doing. They just need a coach. And Michelle talked me into being a coach. And, you know, I let her and another student that have been in cheering for a while be kind of the leaders. And I was just more or less, you know, like a babysitting coach. And I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed watching you guys in, like, um, the band uh, parades. I always went to those, you know, all the parades, like the Berry Apple Festival and everything in Quincy. I loved watching the band. And I loved would, watching you play baseball. Would you like better with the band? Did you like the, the pet band where we did, like, uh, concerts, or did you like the, the marching band better? I liked when they were at the marching band, when they were at parades. I just like parades. Now, the concert parts were good, too. Because they get, you know, they can do a lot of different music and, you know, different people get solos and stuff. But the marching band just was, it was just beautiful and the choreographing and the fit, the feet steps and stuff were just perfect. And you guys always won a lot of awards, like at the very Apple Festival and stuff. Yeah, every year I was in band, we were we were pretty good. I think my senior year we won the Berry Apple Festival, which hadn't been done before. Or we won it my junior year or something like that. And didn't you guys go to, like, Kentucky Derby? Uh, I got to do, yeah, the Kentucky Derby. Um, I didn't get to go to the Chicago one. 
they did the St. Patrick's Day parade there, I think. But yeah, I got to do the Kentucky Derby parade and the Indianapolis 500 parade. And both of and those. And did you see cool. the president or not? No, uh, when he came, I was in eighth grade. I was there okay. for it when President Clinton came through. Um, I couldn't remember if you were in band or not. Yeah, I remember the pictures you took there were really good pictures. Like, they were up close. But something yeah, happened right with the film. There. And so you were, I don't know if one of us actually took pictures or what it was, but it basically double pictured it. So it looks like when you look at them in your scrapbook, it looks like Clinton was in our house. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so what was, uh, you mentioned, uh, like, when I was playing baseball and stuff, what was just some of your favorite things about watching me play baseball? Um, you were a great catcher. I mean, for, at first you did first base. Um, and then I can't remember if you did shortstop or not, but when you became the catcher, you were awesome at catching. The worst was when the kids would come sliding into you, and I just wanted to jump in the way because I knew they were going to hurt you. <laughs> but I, I, I bit my tongue and just sat there, and, and you were, I mean, you were an awesome catcher. Awesome. Yeah, and I know it's kind of a cliche, like, people embarrassed, because you were kind of like uh, our cousin Dawn. She screams a lot when her kids were wrestling and stuff, but that was, you weren't quite as aggressive as she is. Uh, but, you know, I can always remember you yelling from the stand, you know, come on, bear, get a bear. Yep, yep. I was a I was a screamer. Yeah, I yeah, think the worst was um, you were playing first base, and I think it was in Pittsfield, and I can't remember. This wasn't school. I think this was uh, the summer league, and the ball hit the dirt, and it popped up, and everybody's yelling at you get the ball, and you tagged the kid out, but then when you got done, you threw your glove and the ball down, and your lip was bleeding. Yeah, I thought I lost a tooth there. Yep, and then they made you change your shirt because it had blood on it, so we had to switch your shirt with someone. Yeah, that's right. Keep on playing. <laughs> that was the worst. I think I was like in eighth grade when that happened. I was a little bit older. Yeah, I can't remember, but I remember it was down like in Fitzville, Griggsville. I think it was Griggsville Perry, really yeah. Hard. And, uh, at, and everybody's yelling at you, and then when it was all over, you're throwing their gloves and stuff down, and blood's everywhere. <laughs> So uh, let's see. What's uh, so now you got three grandkids now, three grandsons. What's uh, what's some of your favorite things about being a grandma? Everything. I love it all. I mean, I I, just, um, I love when we come down and Jacoby just has so much to show us and tell us and and take us places. And then I've got Joseph that calls me and wants a date night. <laughs> and then now I've got Hank, he's only one, and uh, I don't know what he's going to be like. He's pretty quiet. But I, I love when we get, like, if you're coming down, we'll get Joseph Friday night, and then we'll have the boys Friday night and Saturday night, and then we'll have them all day Saturday alone. We have, sometimes we build our own pizzas, we have popcorn and movie, we go to the soldier's home and see the deer. We go to the mall to gamble, or not to gamble, but to play the games. And then we have ice cream. Um, and we do things that the parents don't need to know about. <laughs> but they'll find out because, you know, they, they, they get spoiled. I, yeah. I, I love spoiling them. Um, you know, I always have to buy them something when I go see them. I love everything about it. So uh, so. On our first call that I messed up, we uh, we talked about our uh, trips and stuff. So, you know, like when we were younger, we went to St. Louis, and uh, we had a boat for a couple of years where we go kind of uh, out boating. Um, we went to Myrtle Beach one year. What what were some of your favorite trips besides those three, or, or what about those three were your favorite parts? Um, boating was fun because we would go and we would stay in a hotel and we'd boat the next day and the next day and stay at a hotel. And you guys always wanted to go to the pool. We loved doing that, and we'd take food and have like a little picnic um six flags was fun because you guys enjoyed six flags but you enjoyed the hotel better with the pool um see, myrtle beach was a blast because you know we got to see things amazing things in myrtle beach we all got to see the ocean for the very first time all of us oh yeah and i guess that is right yeah and you and my nephew josh played in the ocean it was very cold but there were people surfing 
Yeah, it was uh, November. I think we only got like knee deep in maybe because it was cold. Yeah, it was cold. It was, but there were still people out there surfing. Um, um, I was talking to somebody about that Myrtle Beach trip because you think like today, like we've all been in like car seats and buckled up. I think for most of the ride, we rode in the back of like a, a pickup truck with a cab over top of it, didn't we? Yeah, you and I and Michelle. Yeah, we sat back there most of the time. Um, we had a bunch of sleeping bags back there. I know coming back, we pretty much stayed back there. You and Michelle and I slept most of the way back. Um, yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't really sit in the front anywhere, really. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that those nights. Yeah, because I remember driving yeah. by and just got the smell of, like, cabbage. Like, there was, like, a rotten cabbage field or something that we drove yeah, by. Yeah, I can't remember what state that was. But, yeah, there was one that was really a bad smell. And then we stopped at a lot of uh, truck stops use the bathroom and stuff and you know we held john would hold your hand and i would hold michelle and we're like we're not letting you go because yeah it's a dangerous place because there's a lot of truck drivers but well and, i well, mean we had a blast. yeah it was the whole family too so i mean there's like 10 or 15 people i think that went right and yeah, you have that many john, people my brother and his wife mary at the time and josh my mom and bud and john and i and you two kids because we took the truck and we took mom's, uh, was it a Beretta? It was a little bitty car. You I guess did Ronnie, did Ronnie and dad drive in that then? Ronnie and, and dad drove and then they would switch off because they would get tired. So they would crawl on the back or crawl on the back of the car and fall asleep. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so uh, the other thing we're kind of talking about a little bit is, you know, uh, I don't know if, again, I'll probably talk over what we just talked about on this phone call, but, um, you know, when was the time that you kind of realized that we had grown up? Cause I'd mentioned, you know, with phones and stuff, we can kind of see when, um, you know, like I'm, I'm able to see like every four years or every year, you know, on a specific day, like, Hey, here's four years of, you know, Jacoby and everything. Yeah. Um, what, was there a specific age that kind of made you like, Oh my gosh, these kids are, are grown up. Um, when you guys turned 16 and got your cars, your license, you didn't need mom that much. So that made me feel like you're grown up. You know, you could drive yourself to practice in games. You had a job. You didn't need mom. You were dating. You know, you didn't need me unless you needed gas money or something. And that, that was pretty much the turning point that, yeah. And then it hasn't stopped since. <laughs> My favorite time was when you guys were little and, you know, I, I got to do so much with you and go places. But once you hit those, that 13, 14, you guys were pretty much getting independent. And then by 16, you were, but you, you guys did great. I mean, you always got good grades. You always did well in school. You, you know, everybody's like, did you want your kids to go to college? And I'm like, they wanted to go to college. I didn't have to say that you got to go to college. They wanted to go, but I, I didn't force my kids to go, but I'm glad they both went to college, got a degree. They enjoyed it. They, you know. Well, as we're wrapping up our second call, um, is there, <laughs> uh, you kind of said it really well last time, uh, but is there anything that um, you kind of want to say to kind of wrap up what it's been like to be a mom um, and uh, anything you'd want to say to, you know, the grandkids and, you know, Michelle and I? Um. Like I said, I always wanted to be a mom, um, and and I I hope that if anything ever happened to me, that my children know how much I love them. I don't want them to question that if something happened to me tomorrow, and they say, "Did mom really love us?" They they need to know that I loved them the minute I knew I was pregnant with them. Same with my grandsons. Um, when I was told about Joseph. I bawled, and then the day Joseph was born was the day I found out about you and Tiffany having Jacoby, and I was ecstatic bawling, and then the same with Hank. It's, it's always been my dream to be a mom and a grandma, and I'm hoping I'm around when I become a great-grandma. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, I don't so want my kids to ever, you know, you know I think about my brother, Daryl, who died at 16. And I've always told my you and Michelle about my brother. 
I don't want that to come down the road with my grandsons that they don't know about their great grandparent or their great uncle Daryl. People always forget to talk about the loved ones that have passed away. Just like you and, and Michelle should show pictures of Grandma and Grandpa Henniger and of Grandpa Juan and Grandma Brown. They need to know these people so down the road they don't they aren't forgotten. Yeah. But they were they were a part of my life and your life and they should be a part because I remember when you were a little boy and Daryl was gone before you were born. And I remember you had a water bed and you woke up and you stretch and you go, Oh mom, I had such a wonderful night and I said, Well, that's great, sweetheart. Yeah, Daryl and I just talked and talked and talked, and I'm thinking, you never met Daryl. But you said, pointed to your bed, and you said he sat right there, and on your mattress, on your quilt, was a perfect footprint. And I, that's why I always talk about family members that have passed away, because when you're little, you see them, and it's always important to remember them. So I want my kids and my grandkids to always remember me. Yeah. And I Anna, hope their kids know me. Yeah. I think this stuff's important. I mean, we've always kind of had a lot of discussions around family and stuff like that in our, in our family, trying to remember them and everything. And um, yeah. that's kind of why I like doing this stuff because there's a record of you know conversations and stuff like that. Like I sat with grandpa Henniger and I sat with dad and you and, you know, a lot of yeah. people, just because it's great to have that record of that history because, you know, it's just at some point that stuff won't be there. And, you know, like, you know, I think about Jacoby with, you know, all the videos that we have with you guys with him and, you know, with with me and grandma and grandpas and stuff when I was little, there's just, there's not as many because it just wasn't as prevalent. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I think, you know, it's, you know, I want to say happy Mother's Day. Um you know, like I said, we'll probably have to try and get you and dad on here at some point. Maybe we'll do a, do a thing with you guys. Um, there's a, there's a guy I listen to, Kevin Smith. He, uh, he got his mom high once and they did a podcast. Um, so that's whenever weed is completely legal for all of us, that's what we need to do. Cause I don't think dad's ever smoked weed or you. So. No, I, I was a good girl. I was afraid <laughs> to get in trouble. I did not like to be in trouble. I did not like attention drawn to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully I did this right this time, so we'll have to record a third time. But, um, again, happy Mother's Day, and thanks for jumping on, and uh, um, I'll talk to you later, okay? All right. Love you, Bear. All right. Love you, too. Bye. All right, Sean. So we've heard from our moms, and, you know, that's that's all fun and good and all. But now, But now it's time to hear from 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 real heroes uh sugar mamas yeah because this is where we tell the mother-in-law and the mother like stop listening here because this is where it's gonna get inappropriate it that's inappropriate. right 100 percent. no sean because i'm saying that not only we're gonna interview real real heroes because not only are these people moms but they are also Married to us. That's true. They're the mothers to our spawns, and they're married to us. That's, yeah. That's top-level stuff. If they don't yeah. get, like, a Medal of Honor for that, or whatever the citizen's highest award is, like, that's what they deserve. Number one on the charts and number one in my heart. Mm-hmm. So first, we're going to talk to first wife, best wife, my wife, Amanda. All right. I hit the button. I hit the button. So now I got So now you gotta talk. No, you don't. Well, you do, but not right now. All right. So, Sean and I are doing a Mother's Day show, and I have the privilege of knowing a mom. I know her very, very intimately. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um. So right now I'm spending time with my lovely wife. Who's looking at me like she wants to punch me in the face, but that's okay. I don't mind. And I was just going to ask her about being a mom. And that's it. I mean, you know, chit chat for a bit. So, so, so first off, like for you was, did you always envision yourself 
being a mom? Like, was that like always in the cards for you? Or was that something that maybe if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I think the latter. I wasn't really, I mean, I guess I assumed I would have children at some point in my life, but that wasn't my primary goal. Yeah. So it it wasn't like when I grow up, I'm going to have I'm going to have 20 kids and they're going to be named all after all the apostles. And then, no. <laughs> well, first off, Jesus didn't have 20 apostles. I don't think. I don't know. I never read the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I was that religious, although I was raised religious. Right. But um, no, I, I don't. I I wasn't really. I, I was never that type of girl. I yeah. didn't plan my wedding. I wasn't like thinking about babies. I wasn't thinking any of those things when I was a kid. What were you thinking about? It's like I want to be like Fiona Apple. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, 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 I thought I I thought I was gonna grow up and be rather edgy, and you know, I I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to like travel and. So did I. Uh, yeah, like I I pictured myself as an adult, like you know, in this like you know grungy New York apartment, and yeah. you know, just kind of, and then like I would spend time overseas and. Yeah, that sounds you dope. know that that was kind of my time in Milan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of my idea. <laughs> we could still do that. I mean, I like... mean to build a journalism career at this point. Is, oh yeah, uh, would, well, would be that. quite a lot. But that's true. We still do Milan though. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, slightly poor, but mm. so it'd be a small apartment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, it's just two of us. Yeah, and we only need one bed. Yeah. And they could be a small bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because of all the all the snuggling we'd be doing. No, we go outside. Mm, that's true. Okay. So so for you, being a mom wasn't something that you ple- you planned and dreamed of and oh one day. Oh I can't wait for the day that I have children. Like, even though it wasn't something that like you had planned, how like, how do you feel now being one? And, and, might I add, that you've, that you, like, that you have, you have at least one child that, like, made it all the way. You've gone, you've taken, you've taken a person from zero to adulthood. Mm-hmm. So, like, I guess, like, from my perspective, like, I feel you that you rate being a mother very very high like you you 100 percent put your children sometimes above yourself well absolutely i mean i think that once you have children or at least for me i i feel like i kind of learned through curves i didn't really know what i i was looking at myself through the lens of other people around me and you know i was like well we were very young and yeah. So I had really no idea what I was doing. I mean, I, and I just Neither. kind of, yeah, <laughs> and I just kind of, I, I tried it everybody else's way. I tried to, to do things the way that I thought everybody else wanted me to do them. But at some point I just decided that my way was better, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's it's funny because like when I talk with my mom, she said the exact same thing. Mm. Like she's like, "Oh, when I was younger, like I felt like there was this she felt like there was this like standard that she had to like meet and or exceed." Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that like where does that come from? Like does that come from I mean, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> my opinion, I feel like all women are put through that, that they're under that scrutiny, Mm -hmm. you know, like, well, first of all, I I mean, it's strange for a, it's strange for a girl to say they don't want to have children. Yeah. I mean, that's still a thing in our society today. Like, you know, it's like, what, you don't want to have kids? Well, you will someday. Right. You know, like Like, that's, Oh, it's okay. You'll get over that. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And then when you do like, Everyone has an opinion 
as to how you should raise them or how you should be or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's that that is just the way that it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, so okay. I mean, not saying that's a good thing, but that is that has been my experience. Yeah. No, I no, I could I I mean, aside from witnessing it firsthand, mm-hmm. like I it's 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 interesting because like, you know, as I, I I felt like as a quote unquote dad, like I've 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 not felt that pressure, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, there's no other way I can say it. Like I've never I, I never really felt that kind of pressure that like you have like, you know, that I have to do X, Y and Z or else I'm not let into the good dad club, mm-hmm. you know, but like, I don't feel like that's an expectation that society has for yeah boys yeah and men. which i i'm i don't know where that i i i guess i just the thing that uh, that i marveled at is like i have no idea where that comes from does it come, i mean is it just mainly other women or is it is it no i i feel it's everybody i i mean in my experience yes it is everybody mm-hmm. i yeah i could see that too um i mean how you like like I said, you know, you not only have you have you had the the experience of taking a kid from zero to adulthood, you know, like you have multiple kids. Mm-hmm. You've got three. Mm-hmm. Do I? <laughs> nice, nice. It's okay. We'll edit that out so that way I come off as a fucking genius. <laughs> We both knew this conversation was going to go this way. <laughs> Damn, burned me good too. <laughs> um, so like, how do you feel about how do you fe- do you feel like your parenting strategy? You know, like again, no other way I can really think. You know, say it. Like, how do you feel that's changed from going from one to two to three? Because, well, like, I think it's pretty typical. I think the first one. I was so worried about breaking her the entire time. Right. Like, I, you know, and, and I think that's pretty it's typical. Like, for the first, for the first like two months, I, I was, I, I was barely allowed to touch the baby. I was just afraid of <laughs> something that I, I was afraid myself. No, no. Whoa. I was going to say like, like not, no, no, uh, not, not attacking you here. You're, you're good. I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like once you get through, for lack of a better phrase, through the first one. Um, I I feel like after that, you kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. You know? Um, Kylie was such a good kid. Like, so easy. Like, so just chill. And, yeah, I agree. And very, like, ridiculously compliant. I feel like she ill-prepared me for <laughs> the other two. <laughs> because... You know, after I, I I was like, oh yeah, sure. You know, like and you know this we had this was cake. Let's go for two. <laughs> yeah, and Look then it. and we had Richard and like I mean, oh, when he was little, I he exhausted me. He was so rambunctious and rather destructive. <laughs> Broke a lot of things. Yeah, he did. Um, Sai was very temperamental even as a baby mm-hmm. um yeah i agree if you if you displeased Sai, you would know about it even mm-hmm. as an infant mm-hmm. for sure um so very like strong personalities i kai likes to play it really close to the chest yeah you know like she doesn't want to upset anybody or Yes. Anything. No, it's fine. I'm yeah. fine. Everything's fine. She even did that with dinner tonight. She was like, yeah. I'm fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm I'm fine. I'm gonna go away. I'm, I'll be right back. I'm, I'm and just And my whole go. thing my whole thing with her at this stage in her life, I'm like, you're an adult and you need to speak your piece. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to say what what you want to say. Yeah. Hundred percent. But I don't um, know if I'm ever going to impart that lesson. So I okay. So, so like, so you're saying you really felt the difference going from one kid to two? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
So yeah. what? Okay. So what about the transition from two to three? Um, I think that maybe like because Richard was still like a toddler and yeah. Kai was a bit older. Um, she was very used to being an older like or an only child. Um, and I yeah when I when I had Richard as a toddler and Sai was an infant like in a seat you know and Richard would run across the parking lot like laughing and you know and I had like you know a cart full of groceries and a, <laughs> and a baby <laughs> on top you know and you're and you're just like I mean he like I never wanted to do this but he was the closest I came to putting my kid on a leash yeah. like yeah. for real because yeah. it was a danger it was there were safety issues was there himself <laughs> yes others, yes 100%. he thought it was hilarious of but he did. it was not of at he did. all uh okay so so one to two kids was crazy. Mm. Two to three was like... I think it was more personalities rather than numbers, though. Yes. You know what I mean? It yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, I, I get what I you're saying. I feel like that's just true. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, of course. Like, each one's different. And it's interesting to see the way that, the way that all three of them have developed over the years. Because, like, I mean, so, like, you know, our youngest is... 12, mm-hmm. he said with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, so, like, in a way, in a, like, uh, for me, like, in a way, I feel like we're near, like, we're nearing the finish line. Do you see it that way? Do you see it the way no. I see it? No, you don't at all. No. Because I feel like even... Once they hit the finish line, I guess, the 18-year-old yeah. mark, you know, like, they still need you. Yeah. Like, they always need you just for different things. Like, I mean, you know, the first few years, you're just keeping them alive and making sure that, you know, sure. they don't, like, hurt themselves or stick things up their nose, you know? Like, that's pretty much the name of the game. And, you know, it's just, I think just as you go on like if they just need different things from you but they're always going to need you that's true you know i just noticed in this conversation you came across like the you came across like the you know like noble person like they always need you and i'm like when they're 18 get the fuck out (laughs) damn it that's okay i don't think that's true (laughs) i think it's very different from the way that we were raised because like you know when we were younger, like, that was the norm. Like, you know, it was You're 18, like... 18, you get the hell out. Well, I mean, not that, like... I don't think that, you know, our parents were like that, but I'm just saying, like, that was kind of just normal. Like, it was like, you're 18, and yeah. now you do yeah. your own thing, you know? Yeah. But even at that, like, you still, like, when we were younger, like, we would still ask our parents advice, and, you know, still... T- I mean, so, like, they still had an active part in our lives. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, shit, I'm gonna be 38. Mm. He said with confidence. <laughs> and, and, and I still, I still occasionally will ask my mom for advice on stuff. So, yeah. it never ends. It never ends. Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Again, see, you come across <laughs> as the noble figure here. <laughs> okay, so, um, I feel like I already know the answer to this, but like, if if you could kick in the front door to, you know, young Amanda Mother House and grab her by the shoulders, like, what would you tell her before you had to hop into a time machine and come back to the present? I think I would say take a deep breath and relax. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was just a ball of nerves. I made myself sick worrying about every single decision, everything that I did. And I feel like that more than anything, it didn't help me or the kids or you. I feel like it just made me sick. Mm -hmm. You know, it just made me worry. It just like made me, you know, I I don't know. Like I, I was just 
always like wound so tight. Yeah. Do you feel like there was a moment? Like, is there like a pivotal moment in your head where, like, where that, where that idea struck, and you were like, "Why don't I just calm the fuck down?" Like, is there a pivotal yeah. moment, or was it more of like just a, like, like a slow transition into that? I don't know the answer to that. I can't. I guess slow transition. I yeah. Because I, I cannot think of one moment where it dawned on me, mm-hmm. but. When it did get to that point where I was more relaxed, I was like, God, I wish I could go back and, like, just do it all over again and, like, not be so stressed. Yeah. You know what I mean? feel like you would have more fun with it? Yeah. 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 I mean, there's all, like, when you have three small children, like, there's always going to be moments where you want to rip your hair out. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, (laughs) not saying it would be perfect, but (laughs) I'm just saying, like, if I could have known then what I know now, like, I think I could have enjoyed it more yeah but okay so i mean you say that but like i mean you don't sound like you have like a regret about it i mean i wouldn't say that you regret it like you i I wouldn't say that you regret like not knowing that earlier i no i mean i feel like everything basically you know was i mean i think everybody has regrets but i mean i think that everything is basically okay yeah I would agree. I mean, hell, they're. I mean, they're still alive, right? <laughs> I mean, we never. See I don't them think that's the best measure, at, but well, we never okay. see them because they're all at that age where they hide in their rooms. Oh, well, they're doing their own thing, yeah. Which is weird. Why? I don't know because, like, usually they're you know, like they used to like be like, "What are you doing? What? What? What are you?" I mean, I feel like it's even worse in this day and age because now, like, there's so much content and yeah. social media. And, yeah. But, I mean, to be honest, like, you know, when I was a teenager, I did not spend time with my parents oh, nor ask true. them what they were doing. That's true. I was always gone. And even when I was younger, I was just outside. Oh, no, I was not gone because I lived in the middle of nowhere. So I was <laughs> in my room with my CDs and... You know, my teen magazines yeah, and yeah. just, you know, hating them. <laughs> <laughs> that was my MO. So, hmm. I mean, yeah, I get it. Well, okay. So you feel okay. So would you, would you do, do, would you want at this point to like grade yourself? Because I mean, oh God, if you're no. asking me, it's all A's. <laughs> it's all A's, baby. I I do not I do not want to grade so I think myself. I think you did I think you did awesome. Like you got you got three like happy, very well behaved, smart kids that sometimes can be you know sarcastic asses, but like that's my fault and I'm sorry. I think that's both of I, I mean <laughs> we, that's just who we are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Some of that had to rub wow. off. Woe to the world <laughs> that we loose them upon. I am I am very proud of my kids. I, I feel like they are very well behaved. They're very well adjusted. I don't know that I take credit for all of that. Yeah. Um, you've got Kylie, the, the calm, well-behaved one. Yeah. And then you've got Richard, the... He's very opinionated, um, intellectual. Yeah. Um... I love the way his brain works. It's kind of all over the place, but it all comes together. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. He has your charm. For real. No, for real. I mean, like, he can... Let's not ham it up for the... No, no, he... For real. He he has... Like, he can go... Like, all of his teachers love him. They're just like, oh, he's just so great. and and, Because he has that way of speaking that you have that is just, like, endearing to people. That's not true. You should look at how many people listen to our podcast. Oh God! Stop. <laughs> um, and then, and then, okay. And then, and then at the end, you have Cyrus. Now, Cyrus is an interesting one because Cyrus is like a force of nature. Yeah. I'm sorry to the world that we will lose that child upon <laughs> because she's going to. I. I have they. No idea. Yeah. They. Mm. Yeah. Going, see, I get right there. Oh, I slip up. Yeah. You correct me. I slip up all the time. And and I apologize to Sai because of this. Because in my mind, it doesn't, the pronouns don't seem 
grammatically correct. So when I'm just speaking, like it seems strange to say they and there mm-hmm. and them. Like, yeah. It it doesn't for me as well. Yeah, it doesn't. So in my head, I always try and find ways to word myself around them, mm-hmm. so I don't. Yeah, me too. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, because and it's not. It's and I and I tried to explain like it's not. Uh, it's not disrespect. I'm not trying to invalidate, but it just like it doesn't compute in my yeah. head when I'm speaking. Yeah, I feel okay. So well, like I, I feel like I, I feel like I should explain that a little bit. So so um, Cyrus is. Uh, non-binary is non-binary. Thank you, thank you. So they have mm-hmm. identified themselves as non-binary, mm-hmm. and so, like again, like you were saying earlier, like each kid presents their own unique set of circumstances, mm-hmm. and this was something that, like, uh, something that, like, would came unexpected for me. Like I, I mean. If you're, at, I mean, if anybody asked me my opinion, like, you know, what, you know, whatever she wants to do, as long as she's happy, of mm-hmm. course, hundred mm-hmm. percent. With, with you, I feel like I, I feel like you, you know, have have handled their situation much, much better than I have, and I'm not saying that I, I. It's not that I didn't deal with it. Poor deal with things poorly or anything it's just that like just the the transition from like you said like things like pronouns and stuff like that and and respecting their names and space Mm -hmm. and and identity it seemed like you just took to it super easy and i did not i mean i i like i said i make mistakes and i you know, apologize yeah. for those, yeah. you know, um, like we, I mean, honestly, like Cy and I talk about it, you know, on a fairly regular basis, I think. That's the other thing is you have conversations with all three of the kids, like at great length all the time. And it's not that I don't like sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll chit chat with them, but like, I guess I'm just saying like, I feel like you have a much more, I will say that I feel like you have a much more intimate relationship with each of the kids. Like, you know more... Th- I feel like you know and respect more about them... Not respect. You know more about them personally than I feel like I do. I And I think that's just a sign of being a good mom. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like that's just kind of my personality coming out because mm-hmm. I like to have those heart-to-hearts, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I... I don't like a lot of surface. I want to know what's really going on. And I That's true. like, you know, if they you do behave, that with me too, you poke and yeah, me. Yeah. I hate I it. Did. Sorry. I hate it. That, that's me. You can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, thank you. Loving wife. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> mother of my children. <laughs> thank you for taking the time. For me to toot your horn. Mm. Yeah. And but... and I hope I hope this was as fun for you as it was for me. Because I actually that was nice. It I wouldn't mind doing this on a regular basis. We should do this on a regular basis. It wasn't uh that bad, but yeah. it's just a bit uncomfortable for me because I don't like the sound of my voice. Well that's okay. You don't have you don't you so... don't have to listen to it. That's fine. That is true. That is true. But just knowing that it's out there in the world, oh. and it, it bothers me. I have my things. <laughs> that's true. If that's the case, don't look at Pornhub, because I've posted so much. <laughs> so much. Yeah. 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 There's wouldn't. cameras all over the bedroom. <laughs> I know. I mean, I feel like now's a good time as I need to spring it on you. Sure. They're all over. Sure. Oh, God. <laughs> I spent like eight thousand dollars on nanny cams. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't dare. And I just edit. Mm. That's why I spend all the time on the computer doing. Mm. I just edit. I'm editing. I feel like we're making this Mother's Day episode rather X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that last part's for me. It's okay. Sean led it all this. Oh, time. okay. Gotcha. It's fine. Gotcha. It's fine. Okay. But thank you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Richard, that was amazing. Uh, I love that conversation. I love that. I little know bit it got in the me middle. hot. I know. Whew, I can't believe she said that stuff. I know, right? 
Uh, you should but, see, you should have heard you should have heard the unedited version <laughs> and give it to you raw. Uh, but my wife Richard, uh, I am excited to talk with her. She's not much of a talker. She's more of a she. She shows more than she talks. I guess is the best way to put it. It took every bit Whoa. of my energy to Racy. get her to do this. Um, she is in a house with two boys. Uh, both are just like me, pretty much. So it is. Um, I'm surprised she's still here, to be honest, and she hasn't developed some kind of drinking problem. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you have me, but a younger version of me with way more energy and time. Yeah. Uh, because he's exactly like what I would do when I'm his age, or even now, except like I'm tired and older. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Richard, I want to cue up my wife, like you said, number one on the charts, number one in my heart, my wife, Tiffany. All right, let's take two. So, Tiffany, we did this earlier, and you didn't want to do it, so now you've had time to process the questions, so I'm going to ask you completely different questions. What? <laughs> uh, how does it feel to be a mom? Um, I really like being a mom. It was something, honestly, I never thought I would do. Yeah, so like when you were little, did you have dolls and stuff that... You're like, I'm going to have five kids, no. and I want four boys and one girl. No. No. So you weren't the doll playing kind of girl? I was the take my dolls out in the woods and pretend to, like, be wood elf type of person. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> we lived saying. in the country, so I just, like... I played in the woods all the time, and I did not imagine, like, oh, and I have three babies, and blah, 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 and I have to take care of the babies and brush their hair. No, I was, like, chop the hair off of the dolls yeah. kind of child. Uh, I was worried you were going to say, I took my babies out in the woods, and I left them, and I was going to be like, where's our kid at, by the way? Because <laughs> uh, you and I didn't really know if we wanted to have kids or not, right? We were kind of... Yeah, we wanted to do like more traveling and not that we didn't want to have kids, but it was just never something that we were like, okay, now at 26, we're going to start trying to have kids and we want two kids or four kids or whatever. We were just kind of like floating in the wind. Yeah. Well, I kind of said if, if I was, what was the age I said? Was it 30? Um, I think. I think it was 30. If we weren't, uh, like, if we weren't about to have a kid by then, I was probably going to get snippy snipped because I didn't want to be very old Yeah. with kids. Which, now, looking back on it, do you feel like 30 is too old to have a child? Um, I probably could have went for one more, maybe. Yeah. But like, one more as in you want one more, or one more as in, like... You don't feel like 30 is too old to have a kid? I think, well, 30 is not too old to have a kid. I think, uh, like, if I was 32 or 34, I'd feel a little bit too old at that point. Yeah. Not that it's, you're too old, it's just for me, I feel like I didn't want to be, you know, 60 when they're graduating high school and stuff like that. Yeah. Not that, the, I mean, there's people that do it, I just, I just didn't want to personally do that. Because you and I were kind of like, you know, all right, well, I think we was 28 at the time, 29. It's like, all right, well, let's, we'll give it a couple years, see what happens. Yeah, we'll start trying, and some people don't ever actually get pregnant. Some people, it takes a long time. What did so, they find out about me? Um, that you're really good at pulling out. <laughs> <laughs> And that um, I have no problems getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the first. It was, it was within the first like month or two. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, like after we decided, it was probably like the next. My next like fertile window so like I'd say like a month month and a half ish yeah. is probably when it actually happened it was right after a podcast conference when I came home mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that <laughs> <laughs> so what's your what's your favorite part about being a mom um I don't know I think it's fun to watch 
watch him grow up and kind of come into his own, like, um, personality. And watch him play and learn things and kind of discover, maybe discover new things. Because, you know, like, the world is kind of not always as exciting to us because we've been around for a while. But... Jacoby's like, oh, what's that? What's that bug? So it's fun to, like, see him in, like, his wonder. Yeah, that's good. I never really thought about that. You get to see him discover the world kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. So, a uh, good question that, that heard been asked. So if you could go back in time and talk to young Tiffany, would you, would you still be pushing her to maybe not treat her dolls like elves? <laughs> probably try to be a little bit more disciplined with myself. Mm. So I don't think that I was very disciplined or like pushed myself very hard. So probably would Is that, that why you push him so hard? Do I push him that hard? You're like you gotta get that lap in under a minute. <laughs> yeah. What's uh what's the most challenging thing about being a mom? Is it having two boys? Yeah. <laughs> It's having three boys. It's true. We got Malcolm <laughs> as well. It's our dog. Oh, boys are fun. I think it's the like I don't know, every age has its own challenges. But right now I feel like it's really hard because he's starting to talk to me probably the way that I talk to him sometimes like the attitude and the sass that goes along with it and he's definitely repeating things that we say to him and it's like it's hard to say you don't you're not allowed to say that like how do you explain that to a four-year-old yeah because they're not rational creatures at this point in their lives you can be rational and explain away all you want but at some point like the explanation is done, and I don't know. I like, uh, I think right before we left for this weekend, he, you were telling him something, he's like, we're not having this discussion. <laughs> yeah. Then you gotta worry about him jumping off bookcases, trying to break his arms. Right. While we were trying to have a long time. But I do, I think I do okay with not being super panicky in situations like that. I feel like the emotional aspect and the, um, yeah, like the emotional aspect is probably the hardest part for me because it's hard to, I don't know, it's just hard stuff to like explain and deal with and help someone else deal with, you know. Make sure you're not like scarring them for life either. <laughs> yeah. What's a, do you have any challenges like outside of you know the cliche, um, you know, feeling like you're not doing a good job as a mom because of other moms or people or? Um, outside of that, not really. I think a lot of it's just um, trying. I don't know, not trying to keep up with other parents. I am not a Pinterest mom. Um, I don't know, I guess outside of, outside of, um, trying to compare to other parents, I don't know that I, I'm driving while I do this, so you're gonna have to repeat the question, because now that I've been fully distracted by a police officer, I'm... (laughs) My train of thought just went out the window. Do you find any <laughs> challenges outside of just kind of, you know, from outside influences? You know, like, um, you know, have you ever had a situation where somebody has either said or made you feel like what you're doing is not right as a mom? Yeah. I think 
when he was first born, I took a lot of opinions of people, and then I just got super overwhelmed with it, and was like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I think what helped us, too, in that sense, was there was this uh, comedy video of this couple that uh, just had kids. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, everybody, like, it basically just goes through a, a repeating thing of people giving them advice and contradicting advice and all this other stuff, and they're kind of like, oh, my God, like, why why don't they just let us do it our way? Mm-hmm. And then, like, they meet a couple that just had a baby, and they try to give them advice. <laughs> yeah. I try really hard not to be that person. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, a lot of times you just want to help, because I know sometimes, you know, even if you get told something, you don't use it. At least you kind of had that that information to process and be like, okay, no, that's not for me. Yeah. I try to, like, only give advice when people ask for it, and or if they're, like, coming to me with a problem, and I try to just kind of share my experience and what worked for us. Yeah. And not be like, oh, this is how you have to do it. You have to do it this way. That kind of thing. So how do you feel you how do you feel as a mom? Like, where, what kind of genre of mom are you? What kind of genre? Yeah. What do you mean? So, like, there's, like you said, the Pinterest moms. There's the mother hens. There's a... Uh... What kind of a mom do I look like right now? You're kind of... Whenever we see videos, and you always have, like, the moms that are, like, the first in line for the PTA meetings, <laughs> and the, the ones that are, like, rushing out the door and forgetting to put pants on the kid. I feel like you're that one. <laughs> so the hot mess mom? Yeah, you're the hot mess mom. I really am the hot mess mom. Which kind of makes me sad sometimes because a lot of hot mess moms have multiple children. <laughs> and I only have one. <laughs> That's why we only have one. That's the reason. <laughs> no, but... So walk me through... You did a really good job of uh, telling me how... like. Uh, surprising me with when, when we were, found out that we we're gonna have a, a kid. Uh, you'll remember how you found out and how you decided to do that, what you did. Yeah, um, so when I found out, I wasn't showing any symptoms, I just had like, I don't know, I just had a weird feeling a weird feeling and I was like huh I feel like I should have started my period like a couple days ago which if you're a female a couple days ago is nothing like I've been over a week late on my period and not been pregnant before so I was like like man it could be nothing I don't even know if I'm really late I just had this weird gut feeling and I was like I'm gonna take a test just to see and to my surprise it was positive. <laughs> um, I think I was only like, probably only like four-ish weeks, four and a half, five weeks maybe along. Um, and I don't know if I ever told you this, but I had to tell someone, and so I totally told Casey first. Yeah, I think you told I texted her a picture of the test, and I was like, oh my gosh! Because <laughs> um, she was kind of the one that pushed me to start trying, like, to see if you wanted to start trying, because um, we both... We both wanted to be pregnant together forever, like, since we could remember. And her and her husband were going to start trying, and... So I was like, okay, well, you know what? It's as good a time as any to try. And so, anyways, that's kind of how part of that went. And, um, anyway, so I texted her, like, immediately. And then I went literally all day without telling you and trying to figure out how I could surprise you. And I took off work, like, an hour early. I think, I don't remember what I used as my excuse, but I took off work like an hour early, and I got home, and I, um, printed out these, like, 
different scavenger hunt papers and uh, I hid them all over the house. I don't even remember all the ones that there were, but um, so I hid these papers all over the house and I was like, oh, I have a surprise for you. Why don't you look here? And then when he went and looked, do you remember where all the places were? There was like the bookshelf, the bedroom. There's like four or five different places. Yeah, anyway, so each place had a different thing. Said, nope, not here. Why don't you check like some hint. other place? And um, then at the very end, I had one that I taped. Like, he walked past the bedroom that's Jacoby's room now. And when he walked past that, I had a paper and I taped it to the door really quick and then the next clue that he found was taking him back to where Jacoby's bedroom is now and um, it said uh, new tenant coming April 2016 and it was super cute which is funny because you never do stuff like that like yeah, it's I not do. your thing <laughs> no it's not I think you text me like, I got a surprise when you get home. And I'm like, well, it's either something I'm not going to be happy about. Well, that's not true pregnant. because remember for one year for your birthday, I had like so many different presents for you and I had you open them each hour for like the first five hours of your day. That's true. Yeah. So I do stuff like that occasionally. You've done it twice. You've done it that time and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then when you got pregnant. So, yeah, yeah, you do it sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. You're on a uh, one every four year run right now. <laughs> so, in two and a half years, I should get another one. Uh, do, you, do you recall telling, like, your fa your parents that you're pregnant and how you felt about that? Um, <clears throat> I was excited. <clears throat> I don't remember. I know that we had them. We were taking a picture. And my dad says that he knew yeah. right away because we never, like, just take random pictures of the family. Well, I was trying to tell him I needed him to record something for a podcast. Oh, yeah. He just, like, he caught on because he was like, oh, this is all very weird. I don't know what's going on right now. Which is surprising because I'm kind of odd. I figured... <laughs> um, but then you had take a picture of the three of us, me and my parents, and you? No, I was just needed those three. You three. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I said, alright, on three, say, Tiffany's pregnant. One, two, three. And he was just like, what? <laughs> it was not like the super crazy uh, reactions that you see on, on the internet. Yeah, well, your parents really aren't super, like... Uh, reactive like that. My mom, on the other hand. Yeah. I, my dad, I had to be like, did you hear him? <laughs> <laughs> I remember asking him that. Did you hear what Are he you said? Are you mad at me, dad? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I heard him. <laughs> like, oh, okay. He was mad. He's like, how dare you get my daughter pregnant? <laughs> well, we're married. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, but they were really excited folks when we showed up we I feel bad about that one I don't think you should feel bad because it was the day my sister was giving birth to her first kid because we we're gonna do it the weekend before no we didn't do it the weekend before because it's her baby shower yeah we didn't want to take away from our baby shower yeah so we didn't do it that weekend the next week was Memorial Day we we're gonna be back and my dad was gonna be leaving for a fishing trip that week yeah for or, like what a week or two weeks I was a hunt trip, I think. Because, yeah, he's going to be out and gone for a while. We're like, well, I just want to let him know. Because, well, obviously, just because I worry, it's like, it'll yeah. be the worst thing ever. He leaves for that trip. And, but as we're getting ready to leave to go tell him, we get a phone call say, oh, don't come to the house. Go to the hospital. <laughs> Your sister's yeah. giving birth. Yeah. And at that point, we couldn't really back out. Yeah. So, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> 
Yeah, she was kind of on drugs when we gave her her gift because we yeah. had a gift for her too to let her know we're, we're gonna have yeah. a kid. Well, uh, is there anything that you want to say about being a mom? Or, and then is there anything you want to say to Jacoby? Um, I didn't think about that part. Well. Wow. Once you get through this big turn, you should be able to have had time to process it. Remember, he's going to listen to this in like 50 <laughs> years. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would tell him right now. Just that you love him and get you a good Mother's Day gift. Yes. And I love him. Of course. This is the second time. It's not as painful as the first. No. But now I have more editing to do, so thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you're a great mom. I'd rate you as an A hot mess mom. More <laughs> preface on the hot. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You're the hottie mom. Oh my. <laughs> they won't be saying Stacy's mom's got it going on. They'll be saying Kobe's <laughs> mom. Shut up. Has got it going on. Love you. Love you. Oh, well, Richard, uh, that was a great little run through of our. I'm so mothers, hot and bothered. Our wives. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I, I uh, thought that if our wives, our mother in laws, our moms make it all the way through this and like, OK, I want to keep listening because I want to support my pookie bear and his best friend. Yeah. I want to throw in a little bit of extra bit. It's very, very short, but it's a message from my son, Moose. Hi, ma, ma. Mm-hmm. You want to tell... Say hi to mom. Hi, mom. Do you tell mom how much you love her? I love you. What's your favorite thing about your mom? Uh, why do you fart my face? <laughs> Is that what your mom does? No, what's, what's your favorite thing about your mom? Uh, do you play with me? Your mom plays with you? That's your favorite thing? You want to tell Gigi I love you? Love you, Gigi. What's your favorite thing about your Gigi? Uh, uh, thank you, Gigi, for, for the ninja costume. Oh, the ninja costume? What's your favorite thing about your grandma? Uh, thanks. Can I ask God in this for a minute? You want to talk to God? <laughs> what do you want to do? Don't touch that mic. You don't touch that. You talk into it. Um, What's your favorite thing about your grandma? Uh, I'm ta- I'm going to talk to God. Thank you for, uh, like, Joseph and people. Mm-hmm. Joseph and people? That's cool. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, uh, well, there are police officers. Well, there's police officers to keep people safe. Why? There just is. <laughs> then I'll get this road No, it's right where it's supposed to be. It's right where your mouth is talking. Uh, what do you else want to talk about? What do you want to tell your mom? Uh, I only talked to mom. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't say anything about grandma. What do you want to say about grandma? Hey, grandma, uh... Thank you for Christmas and the presents. What about when Grandma takes you to uh, the arcade? Thank you, Grandma, for taking me and Joseph to the arcade. Um, what about uh, Gigi taking you to the lake? Thank you, Gigi, for taking me to the lake. Okay. What well, do you want to tell Gigi Happy Mother's Day? Happy. Happy Mother's Day, T.T. Do you want to tell Grandma Happy Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. 
And do you want to tell mom and say happy Mother's Day, mom? Happy Mother's Day, mom. Can you tell them all love you? Love you. All right. You want to say bye to them all? I um, to keep talking. Okay. We'll keep talking then. It's your podcast now. Uh, what are you going to talk about? You got to talk in the mic. Why is there, why are there a squirrel on a fence? It sounds like you're Jerry Seinfeld. What's the deal with all the squirrels? Is that what he sounds like? All right, let's sign off. You want to say, and don't be a why not. Don't be a why not. <laughs> All right, happy Mother's Day, everybody. All right, well, that was sweet. And now I have to, it's, it was like a Pixar movie. Now I got to go, I got to go find a quiet corner and compose myself. But now I'm a, okay, so I got a little message for from my wife, from my kids, and I'm sure this is probably going to be a lot of pe- a lot of voices talking over each other. <laughs> Maybe a sarcastic quip here or there, but hopefully they can hold it down, hold it together, and say something. Please say something endearing. <laughs> Hello, son. We're doing this again. Right here. You get the middle. We're doing this again. Get over yourself. No, I just remembered. Oldest? Oh. Or you or here. Or here. That's fine. This I will be out in a moment. Okay. Yeah, me and Victoria also want to talk to you about podcasting and everything. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You guys get are you guys, I have no knowledge. Are, are you guys gonna Yes you do. No, are, you, are you guys gonna call it the language of girl mance? No, that sounds dumb. Well, girl mance, that sounds dumb. There is a podcast called The Language of Homance. <laughs> no, what are you insinuating, no. Dad? No, Victoria came up with a name, but I can't think of it right now. But it's like it's a really good name, well, and basically, oh, you it's forgot gonna... it. Yeah, it's so good. How would you forget it? I I just no, I can't retain all the information in my head. There's like there's so many joint ventures that okay. we're doing together. So okay, so this is just gonna be this is gonna be it's gonna be super quick. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But. I was doing an episode for Mother's Day. Okay. So, oh. so we're talking about our mother. We're talking about your mother. Who's else? Who other's mother are you going to talk about? Do you have a secret? <laughs> I don't know. What, um, we have a what, secret um, mother. See you right there. See right. See what I'm talking about? Is she the secret? Is she the secret family that like? Is she part of the secret family that just slipped through the cracks? So. Okay. Tie her can't tell you that. Right. <laughs> we all, no, we always knew she was adopted. We were just a bit off the okay. mark. All right, okay. So we're going to have a, two <laughs> seconds of quiet. All right, so now with me, I have my, my circus of crazy that I call my family. No, it's just, it's just my three kids. So I have, I have Kylie, I have Richard, and I have Cyrus here. And all three of them are going to spend the next however long telling me and telling the world how much they love their mother. So no pressure, but there's a fair chance that she's going to be listening to this and she will be scrutinizing every single word you say just to see who loves her the most. So she's no day at home. I'm kidding. Well, I'm so excited to have so many nice upcoming things. arguments. She has some very nice things to say about each and every one of you all have you now. Well, that's surprising. <laughs> I mean, you sure? That is not no, surprising. No, it's not surprising. Well, no, let's just, no, let's just come to terms we that guys, they both equally hate us. No. We yeah, can't talk true. over. We can't talk over yeah, each that's other. True. Dad that's hates true. Us. You can't talk over each other. That's yeah, true. Dad hates us a little unclear. bit more. Okay. So let's see. Who should I start with? Mm. Does anybody want to put a hand up to indicate? Should I should I have a talking stick that I pass around to you guys so that way uh, talking you know, the talking beanie? No. Talking All right. Beanie. So what do you what do you what do you have to say? <laughs> what do you have to say, son, <laughs> about about your mother? What do you? What, she's a, for the record. She's right outside, and you talk loud, so I know she can hear you. <laughs> Love you too, Dad. Okay. She's a very competent woman. Like whenever, what? It's nothing. I'm please continue. Well, like whenever I want to have a discussion with someone, I'm always in, I always go to mom because I can have like a thorough, talked out discussion. Mm-hmm. That's true. You, yeah, you don't do that with me. 
<laughs> you frustrate me sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> I love you. I, I love you. I love you so much. But she has a way of the two of you have a way of speaking to each other that you just like you link up. And it's I mean it's interesting to watch, <laughs> but I do I I just don't have that link with you. Anybody else? I've got. I've, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Eldest daughter. Um. Well, I love mom very much. But there. <laughs> no, but I mean, the butt there, Jesus. <laughs> well, we get along and everything. I feel like you know we. I feel like we more talk about like shopping and stuff like that uh-huh. more than like actual like real world things. I mean, who, but okay. I I I get what you're saying, but who's whose responsibility is to bring up those topics? hers or is it yours i mean it is mine i I just i mean i have no problem talking about like real world things i just don't really do it on a regular basis because i'm like i know what's going on so and everything sucks and everything so why do i (laughs) just like currently right now like anilis and richard was or still is but i mean you know i still love her but i feel like we butt heads quite a bit Mm mm-hmm you know, I mean, just because. Okay. D- okay. Like, do you, okay. Let's say, because you've said, you've said yourself, you said eventually you want to be a mom. Yeah. Okay. So how, okay. So do you feel like, like what, what model do you feel like she has given you? As to what you would want to do and or not do with your with your eventual children. I mean, I feel like she's been like a great role model when it comes to like how I want to parent my kids. Like yeah. when I grew up and everything, like you know, being supportive of all of her children, no matter what they want to do and you know what they like, believe in or anything, even if it's not something that she believes in, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I mean, just, like, being supportive of everything and, you know, always being there for us, even though, like, we're not very... We're, like, all three of us are not... We're very... Well, like, we like to keep all of our emotions inside. Yeah, we're not, we're not, very... we're not open people, really. Yeah. Well, the thing and is... she's very much like, I want to hear what you're saying. We're just like, no, no, I don't want to talk <laughs> about this. And then she's still, like, cool with that. She's like, eh, okay, well, tell me when they're ready, I guess. <laughs> well, on that subject where you guys butt heads, like, what Dad was talking about, how, like, me and Mom, like, bas- like, like we, we have this, like, thing where we just, like, talk. Like, I feel like you, like, whenever, like, I see you and Dad talk, I feel like, I, I see that, too. I just feel like we butt heads a lot, not even just because we're, like, all in the house together or anything. I just feel like when it comes to, like, my life outside of the home, and I don't really like to share that stuff. Mm. Like, especially when it comes to, like, dating now, because she, we had that discussion the other day. She was like, why aren't you telling me about this guy? And I'm like, oh, well, because, like... Not really that he's not gonna be my boyfriend or anything, so I didn't really think to mention it. Oh jeez. <laughs> see that's a problem. I see I <laughs> see you just said that. Like I didn't hear any of this. Like, oh we click so well. I didn't get any of this. Oh here well, I didn't think you wanted to hear about that kind of stuff. Well we had the a hundred percent correct. <laughs> Cyrus, what would you like to say? Um How do you feel about your mom? I feel like Honestly, mom is a very, like, empowered and understanding Uh kind of person. Okay, okay. Like, she very much understands, uh, am I loud? I don't know. No, you're fine. (laughs) No, your your voice is fine. I just, your hands, your hands. I was trying to get you to not pound on the table. (laughs) Anyway, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Um... I I don't know. It's hard to put on a word into words like a person's personality, really. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Without well, writing a, like podcast, a ten-page essay, so, I mean. I mean, without all... writing a ten-page essay, I well, can't. It was hard. It would be hard to explain. But like, she's very empowered, and like the reason of 
like when she wakes up in the morning, like she's ready to do things yeah. and stuff, and like ready to go, and she's and she wants to get everybody on the same page of as that. Uh huh. Uh huh. And um, understanding is like, I, I mean, she's one of the most understanding persons I've really ever met. Because, mm-hmm. like, most people, like, like yes, they'll understand some things, but other things than those, but, like, oh, that's, like, kind of iffy, like, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But she, like, if she doesn't understand things at the time, then she'll try to at least understand it. Like, give it, uh, give it, like, full attention and not to, like, judge it at, like, the first, like, the first sight of it, really. Okay, okay. Okay, so so I have a question for all three of you. Mm-hmm. How do you feel if there's if there's one lesson you can think of off the top of your head that she has instilled upon you that you feel like you're going to carry all the way into adulthood and beyond? If there's one thing that like like a lesson she you know like hey always remember this or maybe this you know like live your life this way or you know, maybe not necessarily in order, but just like it good advice. Like mm-hmm. what is one piece of oh, of something know. that <laughs> see, I see already, oh, we already okay. know. Exactly. Yeah. See I said that in all three of you instantly. Like well, yeah. okay, what do you, what do you have? Well the thing is it, it's I think the reason why like like Kylie said we're so closed off. I think that's the reason why it's hard to come up with words about how we feel about our mother. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's like the same thing. How like I it would be hard to put in words how I feel about you uh-huh. as my yeah. father because like I, I don't know it would just be so hard to just like think clearly like and put it into words. Okay, so what's one? So what's one piece of? What's one lesson that you feel like your mom's imparted to you that you're stuck in your brain? Um, to live my life, uh-huh. like, and, and not try to live it, like, for other people. Like, don't try to, like, do everything and, like, try to, like, help everyone in every way that I can. Because, like, you know, there are just going to be some people that, like, they they want your help just for the sake of attention or mm-hmm. something else. Like, mm-hmm. in, like, a way to control you. So take, so you're, so you're like, saying, like, take a man, like... Yeah, don't, don't let people take advantage of you. Exactly, exactly. Like, sometimes, sometimes, you, sometimes your, your well-being is paramount to other people's well-being. Yeah, put myself before others, like, at some, at some times. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Do you, you immediately raised your hand because you had, <laughs> what, what did you have, Kylie? Um, I think one of the lessons that she taught me was... To pick something in my life that I'm happy doing. Uh-huh. And I think that, I mean, she's probably taught this lesson to all of us, but I think mm-hmm. she really put it in with me, especially, like, after graduating high school and everything and, mm-hmm. you know, starting college and, like, my very first job and everything. Then she always told me, she was like, you know, you don't have to do this, like, right now. Like, you could just pick, like, one thing or the other. You could go to college or you can get a job, like, whatever you want to do. And... Of course, I was dumb, and I was like, no, I was like, I'll do both, because I'm like, I can do both, because it's, like, super easy and everything, mm. and that didn't not, end not up... Not so super easy? No, that didn't end up <laughs> working well. That's I, okay. I mean, and, like, mm. it all worked out in the end, you know, sure. like, mm. I mean... It's I'm, a trial and error of life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and luckily, like, you know, I was, like, still, I was still living at home, and I was still young, so I learned that lesson early, yeah. and I'm like, okay. I need Got that to, out of the way. Yeah, I need to take things, like, yeah. one step I, at a time. Yeah. But she was very much like, you know, like, if you don't want to go to college, you don't have to, like, you just, like, pick something that you're happy doing. If you're not happy doing it, then you got to pick something else, like, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm, like, totally supportive. Like, if... You don't want to go, like, be a serial killer? Sure, why not, you know? Well, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't think she taught us that lesson. If anyone's going to be a serial killer, it's going to be me. I mean... <laughs> Obviously. I'm not liking where this conversation's <laughs> heading. Well, no, I'm just saying. Cyrus, like... what was what was your what was your lesson? Um, me... Like, me and Mom get on various topics of, like, religion. Uh-huh. Like, we ha- we've had, like, multiple talk, um, like conversations about like different religions and stuff Mm -hmm. because i obviously don't know everything but i think i do yeah okay but so what's so what's the lesson um it was really like 
whenever, if people, like, I don't personally, I'm not personally a Christian, but if mm-hmm. that makes somebody happy mm-hmm. and, like, lets them live their life to the fullest and stuff, then, like, let them, like, do that. Like, don't, like, judge them or anything or just, yeah. like, let them be happy because, er, like, they obviously deserve to be happy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like that. Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't, don't yuck, don't yuck someone else's yum. Yeah. 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 Like Gouda. Yeah. By the way, side note, she would not be cool with us being serial killers. Like, she'd probably ground us after we got out of jail or That's something. That's true. Yeah. Like, she'd be like, I'm so disappointed in you. I feel I like. You kill a bunch not, of people. No, no, I f- no, no, she wouldn't be ashamed of that we killed a bunch of people. She'd be ashamed that we got caught. That's true. Okay. So. <laughs> sloppy work. All right. So, so one, so one last message. This is, this is the message you want to give to your mom. Mm-hmm. This is like your, this is like your Mother's Day card in audio form. Ooh. So all right, cool. I don't have to draw anything. All right, I'm down. <laughs> all right, so so Kylie, what would you like to say to your mom? I would just you can like say Happy to... Mother's Day. This is gonna come out on Mother's Day. All right, all well, right. Happy Mother's Day first of all, and I would also just like to say that I love you, and I know that you know we've had our fights and everything, and you know you've like we we've been through a lot. I mean, I came into your life when you're only 16 years old and you know i really you know i don't know if i could do that or not honestly <laughs> having a kid when i was 16 i'd probably it's rough. i'd probably freak out <laughs> like that i don't lie it's rough i, I mean, mean you I, only got half of it you know you yeah. have to give birth dad she was 17 by the way 17 uh, yeah, because oh, oh, no, because two days after Dad turned either, eighteen, either uh, way, they had it you. was still very young, and sure. I didn't I didn't realize that until I saw a picture yeah. of you graduating high school, and I was like there, yeah, and I was like, oh my god, you guys were like children when you yeah. had me. <laughs> so yeah. obviously, I commend her for like you know, you know. Like, keeping me alive and teaching me so much wisdom, even though, like, she was still trying to figure out her own life, because she was still very young, Mm -hmm. and I, like, I don't know if I could, like, you know, take care of another life while I was trying to figure out my own, but she did a good job, I mean, not just, like, with me... But, like, with all three of them. Isn't it weird know? that when, like, you see your friend's parents and then, like, they're, like, 50 or 40, I'm like, oh, my God, they're <laughs> so old. And I even just that. That's I think so it's true. crazy when people say that they, like, plan for children. I'm like, oh, my God, people, like, plan for children? I thought that they just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, it's like oh, <laughs> Like that, like blows my mind. Not less house, my God. <laughs> Richard, what, what's your what's your Mother's Day card for your? Well, I I think I would say that no matter what I say or what I do, I I'm always gonna love both of you guys as my parents. Yeah, this is about her. Well, I I know I I know, but I'm just saying like <laughs> sometimes my mouth moves faster than my brain. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that, man. And, 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 you know, no matter what I say, you guys, are, you're always going to be my mom, just like he's always going to be my dad. And, you know, I'm not good at expressing, like, in words my emotion, but I do love you with all my heart. Yeah, what's left the hanger? <laughs> Let that seep in there. You can, you can throw in a happy Mother's Day, too, at the end. Happy Mother's Day. There I you love go. you. There you go. Sorry. Um. Well, happy Mother's Day because it's coming out Mother's Day. Uh, but I de- I don't I can't put into words how thankful like I am that you have like accepted me the way I am. Cause like I'm a I'm gonna say it like I'm the I'm like the gayest person I know. Uh-huh. And like I'll be I. I know she would obviously, like, understand that, but then also, like, me being non-binary and, like, her, like, trying to use, like, the pronouns and stuff, mm-hmm. and, like, my name, mm-hmm. it, <laughs> it's, it's honestly more than anything I could really ever ask for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, 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 happy Mother's Day and you love her, right? Perfect. I think my heart is, <laughs> like, 
making a fist. Oh, my oh. heart's hurting. <laughs> it's just uh, clenching. Oh, like. well, it's okay. We'll all, get through, we'll all get through it together. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So, thank you guys. And I'm sure your mother will thank you, too. And don't worry, as as whatever feels you're feeling right now, I'm sure she will feel them a hundredfold when she listens to it later. Because you def- all three, you definitely pulled at the heartstrings. <laughs> really, really good. So thank you, guys. Oh uh, Well, Richard, that was a beautiful, great episode. I'm glad we got it all put together. Um, I'm happy that it will live on our feed from now to the end of time. Uh, but as we're closing it up then, Richard, uh, for our Mother's Day special, what is your Richard's closing thoughts? Um. I, I, I think I, I think I said this with uh when I was talking to my mom and uh when you know we did like what, what was it probably like two years ago we two did and a half, three years ago, yeah. It's been two, a three years ago we did a Father's Day episode where I spent um you know twenty, thirty minutes talking with my dad and then about let's see that was that would have been June, so then uh, do math. But eight months later, he passed away, and I still cannot bring myself to go back and listen to that episode. Can't do it. It's still there, and it'll always be there. And I'm glad it's there, but still can't do it. Haven't been able to do it. Um, funny story though. I actually said the same thing to my mom and she told me that he, my dad kept, had a um, cassette, a very, one of those tiny answering machine cassettes, you know, the really, really small cassettes Uh and he had it inside an answering machine. And the only reason he had the cassette and the answering machine was because there was a, a, a message left on the machine from his father that he just kept. He never like the answering machine like broke, you know, years ago, but he still kept the machine and he kept the tape in the event he ever wanted to listen to the message again. And so I guess that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'm just glad that I got to have it with I, I'm glad I got to have that there's, you know, 30 minutes of his voice on the Internet that I could always go back and listen to someday. Mm-hmm. And now I get, and now I get that with my mom and that, and that it, it means a lot, even though I made every effort to put off doing that as long as possible. So it's nice. Well, I can't say anything any better, Richard. That was really well said. Um, so I, since it's mother day, mother's day, I'm going to give the moms off and I will do the housekeeping. Uh, visit our website, we're at languageofbros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languageofbro. Email us at bros at languageofbros.com. Like us on Facebook. And remember, there's a couple ways you can support the show. You can always spread the bromance by liking, retweeting, and sharing our show on Reddit. And you can also pick up some LOB merchandise, like our brand spanking new logo at the LOB merchandise store at the T Public Store. And also, if you want to take a little bit of a bigger step, you can join us on Patreon at our Patreon account at www.patreon.com slash language of bromance. Our mothers and wives would ever so appreciate it. Uh, yes, we like to thank Wendy and Aaron, of course, for being longtime members of the LLB Army. You guys rock, and I'm sure your mothers rock, too. All right. Was there anything else before I close her out? Nope. We're done here. All right. Well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be a why not. Why not? Happy Mother's Day. From us to you.